Hey, Brother Sewing and Crafting family, how was your weekend? Well, hopefully not eventful. Well, <laughs> I should say that in a very nice way. How are you today? So uh, welcome. It is Monday for those of you that need to check off the day. <laughs> and we have a really fun show to, for you. Emily's here. She's going to show you how to refashion a top into a swim top, which is going to be very fun. And I'm working on something over here for next week that I'll give you a little preview on. So welcome, everyone. Say hi. Oh, hey, Wolfpack. I see everybody rolling in. And for those of you that are new to the show, the brand ambassadors have taken over the Brothers Sews uh, Facebook and YouTube page. We're doing live shows every day, some days even more than one. And also, we are giving away a sewing machine at the end of each week. So Brother has donated 10 sewing machines. Last week, we had our lucky winner. Maybe you'll be at this Friday. So I just sent out an email to everyone with today's schedule and, or not, I should say this whole week's schedule and the link to enter the giveaway. So if you didn't get it, you can message me or just go to AngelaWolf.com and sign up for the email, but message me so I can send you the last email. Sound good? All right. Hey, there's Emily. Hey. Hi, Emily. How's it going? Good. What are nice. you up to? Um... Not too much, just trying to get organized for the week. And this is the day the kids don't have school, so it's kind of a good day just to catch up on some things. And yeah, hopefully start off the week on a good foot. So we're just plugging away. Very nice. So I have to tell you before you start, I, I'm working on something for next week because do you know what next Monday is? It's May the 4th. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what I would think as well, but it's the big Star Wars day. Yes. Brother machines have some Star Wars. They um, have a licensing agreement with Disney. I am working on something really cool for yes. next Monday. It's going to be a game. But that's all I can tell you. But you want to see it? Yes. Let's see. Okay. Hold on. I'll bring you over there. Okay. Ooh. Check this out. Yeah. That is so, very fun. I actually, you can get these designs on iBroidery. I also have a Star Wars machine where I could just do one of these. Okay. But I'm making five of them because, you know me, I can't stand to wait. So I put <laughs> all five of these in here. So cute. So I'll just ask everyone watching, do you have any guesses what I'm working on here? <laughs> it's really it's so fun. fun. Yeah. So, yeah. um, by the way, I hate to say this, but I used to be a really big Star Wars fan when I was younger, but I have not watched all the new things. So I'm a little out of it. So uh, any idea what this little guy's name is? I know Darth Vader. I know <laughs> Yoda. I have no idea. So maybe the Wolfpack will help me out on yes. this. I'm sure my six-year-old could tell you what it is, but. Yeah. I <laughs> if my brother's watching, my I know he's probably. Or this and yes. Oh gosh, yeah. Star Wars lace, okay? <laughs> okay, Star Wars lace. There we go. R2-D2. I remember R2-D2. Is that R2-D2? I think it might be. With the color that he is, it makes me kind of think that he is. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. How did somebody already guess? <laughs> Tic-tac-toe piece. Pam, you hit it right on the head. I cannot believe it. That's fine. I don't think I would have gotten that, but... Star Wars face mask. That would be a good one. <laughs> Bookends. Oh, there's so many good ideas here. So, all right. Well, this is next week. So I'm just giving you a little teaser on that. So Emily, what do you have for us today? I know you have a really fun project. All right. So today I am going to show you how to use um, a free sewing pattern that I have for kids. And this is actually one of the very first ones that I designed back when um, I just had the two boys and I was looking to try to get into um pattern designing and so i started really simple with a raglan shirt well the it's been very popular of course it's a free shirt download and um but over the years i have been able to hack the pattern multiple times to make other really cool things with it like i added a collar and a zipper and you know made like a little um fleece pullover i've turned it into a dress or a sweatshirt like it's just so Raglan shirts, I feel like, are so multidimensional and you can really use them for so many different things. So my latest idea was to use it and to create with swim fabric these rash guards or swim shirts, whatever you want to call them, for summer. So I so made a boy version and this one is pretty much um, the only thing I really did different on the pattern 
was I sized down one size so that it would be um, a little bit tighter. You don't really want when you're swimming a really, you know, a, a loose shirt floating around in the water. So this was the one that I did for boys. So it was pretty simple. And then I added a few more details and I made this really cute little girl version to go with a swim bottom. And this is what we're going to be making today. So That's really cute. Um, yeah. So we're going to just change up the sleeves a little bit from the original pattern, shorten it, and then add a ruffle. So you could really do this with any t-shirt pattern that you already have. And I'll just kind of give you some of the modifications that I made. And then you could go ahead and it's swim fabric. So the main difference is that the fabric is for water rather than just cotton. Right. Which is great. That is so cute. Yeah. All right. Well, then I'm going to let you take it away. Okay. Oh, wait, somebody, by the way, we have someone in here today from Cabo. I forgot to tell you all that if you've never been to the show before, say hi, say where you're from. You never know your neighbor might be sewing. That's paper. great next to you <laughs> and we got palm beach in the house oh my goodness this is awesome so, so uh, fun. i'm gonna let you uh take it away i'm gonna go turn off my embroidery okay sounds good all right all right so i'm going to um move my computer out of the way and give you a little bit of a closer view of what's on my cutting table so i can show you some of the modifications that um, I did to the original pattern to create this sort of ruffled swim shirt and it looks really really cute With a, just a pair of swim bottoms, you know, like bikini bottoms or whatever you want to add You could also wear this over a swimsuit um, Or you could just make this out of knit and use these same modifications to make a cute knit top if you don't want to do the swim so I'm going to show you the original pattern pieces and then how I change them up so I've already cut the back and front and neck band. And really the only modification was, like I mentioned before, I sized down. So I want this to be pretty fitted on my child and not loose. Cause once it gets wet, it's gonna be even looser and you don't really want your shirt like floating up in the water. So that's something that I keep in mind. So I sized down, so it's gonna be um, fitted. And then I've chopped off about the bottom four inches, which will be the ruffle. And I pre-measured to make sure my length was good on my shirt. You can, of course, lengthen or shorten depending on what you are doing. If you're sizing down, you do usually want to add a little bit of length because um, the smaller sizes are shorter. And so because I'm making this for a taller child but thinner, I did lengthen it. Okay, so I've cut it in half. And you will see here I have a front and a back cut from this pink and a ruffle cut from this floral. Okay, so this is the two fabrics that I'm using for this project. And so this is the ruffle. Here's the front and the back. And I just cut it off and made the ruffle about four inches. Okay, so, I, love those, I love those colors. What a great combination. Yes. So I made um, my daughter a suit out of this before we went on vacation in February. And we were with my um, sister. And she has three girls. And she was like, my girls need a suit made out of that floral. So... Um, I, love it. I said, well, I have this idea for this other sort of two piece. Can I use, do that? So I'm actually making three of these over the course of this week to send to my nieces. So um, that's very cute. cute. And then I cut a neckband about a one and a half inches wide. So that is going to be our neckband. And then the sleeve is just slightly trickier, not really. Um, but I thought I would just show you how I'm cutting it out. So. This is the raglan sleeve, and um, this is the fold. Here's the outer edge, and normally, I'm sorry, this is the outer edge, this is the shoulder seam. Normally, from here, then the shirt kind of goes down at a different angle. So instead of making my long sleeve, my short or my long sleeve past the shoulder seam, I just cut it right there so that you can see we're just gonna have a sort of a cap sleeve, all right? So I just have cut it instead of it continuing down. Now, the other thing is I want it to be more of a sort of a flutter look. So what I did was I cut my pattern in a couple of spots so that I could splay it open. So I'm just gonna show you how kind of easy that is to do. So I'm still folding or placing the edge that is the fold line. 
on my fold. And then because I cut this in a couple of places, I can just sort of swivel the pattern open. And then, whoops, the magnets are too, too strong. <laughs> um, <laughs> can't be that close together apparently. So then we can see that our this edge is going to be more of a ruffled look rather than a tight sleep, like the boy version or the original version, which would just be a slim fit sleep. So we're gonna cut two sleeves. I can find what I did with my rotary cutter. And then you, um, because I didn't really have an actual pattern piece for this sleeve, I just sort of splayed it open. I will wanna use the first sleeve as the template for the second sleeve to make sure they match, okay? so because I don't know if I'll get this one exactly the same again. So I'm gonna take this one, move it over here, and use that as my template for the second sleeve, and then we'll have two sleeves that will be just sort of a cute little flutter sleeve and a cap sleeve length. They're not very long. All right, so now we have a ruffle, a neck band, a front and a back, and two little sleeves so we can go ahead and start sewing. Sounds good, that's very, I'm, I'm reading all the comments. So some of you keep asking your questions because we'll be sure to answer those. So a couple of things, I'll put uh, her website up down below and that's where you can find a lot of her patterns. But they were asking, a lot of people are asking about fabrics, you know, if it's protected from the sun, things like that, like some bathing suits are. Not, now, not all bathing suits are actually protected from the sun, but here's the thing, you can buy fabric like that, You. Yes for that if you want. Uh, so just know that, I mean, it's whatever you're using. If it's a top that already has that ability to block the sun, then you have it. Or if you're refashioning, find a shirt that has that. And if you're finding fabric, you can actually find fabric that will, that has UV protected, protected in it. I always yeah. end up having to wear just a load of sunscreen. <laughs> yes. So, I mean, I'm, I think that this is about as, because it's swim fabric, it's as protective as most swimsuits are, and I would say most of us don't put sunscreen under our swimsuit. Um, however, if you normally do, then I would continue to do so. Uh, <laughs> but this is specific swimwear fabric, um, so it's going to have about the same UV protection as a swimsuit that you would purchase in the store. So, oh, well, that's a great that's a great way to put it. Yeah. Yeah. But if you normally do like put swimsuit under a t-shirt, if you were going to wear a t-shirt, then then you can, but it is, you know, and just like any swim fabric, if you rinse it after you swim and if you take good care of it, it will last. If you don't and you swim a ton, it's gonna wear out. But if, if a swimsuit lasts a summer of a lot of swimming, I'm pretty oh, happy. I'm That's usually pretty good. happy with that. <laughs> yes. Um, okay, so we're going to begin sewing and I have a front and a back and really the only difference is the neckline. So you can see here that the front neckline is a bit lower than the back neckline. I don't know if you can actually, because yeah, we can see it great. Okay, all right, clear. Oh, good. Um, okay, so that's the only difference. So I'm going to begin by sewing the sleeves to the front of the shirt, and the sleeves are the same on the front and the back, so we don't really have to worry about um, a front to a front or a back to a back. And then I'm actually gonna sew the neckline on before I complete the circle of the shirt. So we'll only sew three of the four seams, but we'll start in the front and then we'll add a back on. So I'm just putting a couple clips here so I can keep this in place, right sides together, sort of all the normal sewing jazz. The seam allowance is included on the pattern, so you're just going to um, like normal, so this is a knit stretchy fabric, so you do, like with any knit fabrics, wanna make sure you're either using a serger or a knit stitch on your sewing machine because it needs to be able to stretch and give as someone is wearing it. Hey, so Emily, are you using, it looks like from here, you're doing a four thread overlock, right? I've got a four thread overlock going, so yeah. Right. Oh, that looks great. Yep, and nice and stretchy. So I don't worry about reinforcing the seam and you know, of course the front looks great too. So we'll just do both of these. Okay, so 
now what I'm going to do, I have the front, and you can see it, you know, starts to even take shape. We're going to add the back. Oh, maybe that was the back. Oh, you're right. I didn't do the lower neckline. Whatever. It's all, <laughs> it's all the same. I just was going to do it on the back, but it's fine. Um, okay, so we have our fourth or our back, and we're going to pin it or clip it to stitch it. And this swim fabric, I find a little bit tricky to tell the back and the front. If it doesn't have the print, is easy. So sometimes I just want to give it an extra check to make sure it really is. Just because the one side is a little bit shinier. So if you do mix and match it, you probably will notice. Okay, now here's where I'm going to just make this up as I go. So I uh, like to leave one of the back shoulder seams open, which I already did not do, so that I can sew the neckline on sort of flat and then close it after because, um, and then on your back shoulder is where the um, neck seam is. So you can know what's the back and what's the front. But since I left the front open, I don't want my <laughs> neck band on the front. So I'm going to complete the circle and I'm going to add my neck band on as a circle rather than on the flat. And some of you who always do this will wonder why I mean, why I would have ever do it anyway else. But I do usually like to sew my neck band on while it's flat. Yeah, I do too. I, I do both. I think it's just a combination. But with little kids, it's so much easier to do if there's just one. So we will just do it this way. And I will show those of you who only ever see me do it the one way that I actually can. <laughs> I do it both ways. All right. So um, now, if you are doing a neckline for the first time or haven't done a lot, you usually want to measure if your pattern doesn't include exact measurements. And even if it does, so many fabrics are such different stretch that you almost always want to tweak it and check it anyway. Um, but so you can measure around and then a good gauge is to take 80 to 90% of that measurement and cut your neck band that size. Now I will say, I feel like because I've sewed many, many, many neck bands that I just kind of do a little stretch around and get a very informal measurement by just knowing how much I'm going to stretch as I sew. So I just did that and then cut it and then we're going to sew it into a circle again right sides together so that the wrong sides will be folded in. And now we can pin it on. So, so that we have a little differentiation between our back and our front, I'm gonna put this seam in the center back of the shirt and clip it. And now you should have three layers of fabric. So two layers of neckband folded together and one layer of shirt. And then from there, we wanna try and quarter it or more around the shirt. So I'm going to pin to the front neckline of the shirt while you're pinning i'm just gonna christina wants to know if the neck band is on the bias and this is a it's, it's a knit fabric so you can just cut it across the stretchiness yep i it's don't really simple yes and you can cut there's many different preferences on cutting neck bands my mom really loves wide neck bands she likes the look it almost looks like a mock turtleneck when she makes t-shirts because she just really likes to kind of have this wide neck band. I probably err on the side sometimes of too narrow, which makes it difficult for me to sew because I really like a thinner neck band. So right. I usually go between one and a half and two inches wide. This is an inch and a half. And, and it's, about, it's about a good amount to manage and still give yourself a seam allowance and not make it too tricky. So... Personal preference. I mean, there's there's no wrong or right way really to do it. 
And right before you stitch, I'm just there's a pile of people that rolled in late later, I should say. It doesn't mean you're late. So this is how you can watch the video. You can this is we're on live on Facebook and live on YouTube. So you can go back to either Brother So's Facebook, Brother So's YouTube, watch these videos, or you can click save or share it to your page and then you'll always be able to have it in your own feed which is probably the safest way if you know there's it's a topic that you want to see so yes, yes they're all be up here so you can see Great. okay okay so now we're sewing the three layers of fabric together again two layers of neckband one layer of shirt and i'm going to just do a very narrow seam allowance and just sort of trim any excess fabric of those three layers um, around so i'm not taking a full seam or seam allowance on this neckband. I do wanna make sure that I'm stretching the band because it's smaller than the shirt. You do wanna make sure as much as possible not to stretch the shirt though, so you don't have a stretched out um, neckband. So you'll kinda of see as I go how I use my two hands to do that. So I do a lot of just like sew a couple inches, then stop and adjust, stretch and continue on. And I kind of have my clips around to keep me on track. And I don't know. I mean, I think my kids actually really don't love um, wearing swim shirts. Uh, my boys. Rose will wear this because it's like a, you know, a bikini top or a swim top when she's wearing it with her bottoms. But I know that there's a whole crew of kids who always, always, including my nephew, wear a swim shirt because they're so pale and this is better than having to slather, you know, tons and tons and tons of sunscreen on them and it just helps them to be able to be out in the sun a little bit longer. So when I shared this tutorial last week, I had a few comments like, what's a swim shirt? What's a rash guard? So if you know <laughs> what it is, then you don't need it and don't worry about it. But if it's something that you do need or like or want or purchase, this is kind of a fun way to be able to personalize it, or um, you really can make a lot out of a yard of fabric because most swim fabric comes in the 60 wide. So you've got a lot of options. Okay, so there's our cute little neck. So cute. And you'll notice that most swim shirts are high necked because obviously you don't want to have to put sunscreen, you know, up, up on your neck. So this isn't like a scoop neck shirt, but you could edit the neckline um, however you want as well. Um, okay, so I am not going to hem the sleeves. It's swim fabric. It's not going to fray. It's just like knit, pretty dense knit. Um, and I want sort of that fluttery look. But if you wanted to hem the sleeves, I would do a rolled hem or a narrow hem at this point um, in the tutorial before I had this, the um, side seams sewn up. But what I am going to do is prep the ruffle um, so before we get to start sewing the side seams. So I have the bottom ruffle of the shirt. And I'll just, for those of you that did come in a little bit late, this is what I'm making. So it's um, a raglan style shirt where we're adding just ruffle cap sleeves and a ruffle on the bottom. And it's to be worn with either, you could wear it with shorts or like a bikini bottom, swim bottoms. And you could of course custom make out of the same fabric. So cute. So cute. And those of you rolling in again, I see more people asking, um, can you watch the video? Yes, you can. And also, uh, depending, okay, so I didn't even say this at the beginning, but I usually always do. There's a lot of people online live these days since we're all stuck at home. So <laughs> if for some reason your signal keeps going in and out or something like that, just uh, click refresh on your page. But when this video is over, you can immediately watch it over and then it usually will just play just fine. So <laughs> usually. Um, <laughs> Hey, Cena wants to know, how would you size it up for a teen or an adult? Um, so I'm guessing you would just grab the kind of shirt that would fit that person and you would just size it down the same way. I think it's usually about a quarter of an inch for knits. Yes. I so I would, I would just, if you already have a t-shirt pattern that you sew for that teen or that adult, um, this pattern is only for kids. I do have a free women's raglan, so you could probably use it. Um, cause it goes down to like extra, extra small. So you probably could use it depending on the size of your tween, but you can use this same concept with any shirt pattern that you already own, that you know, that you like, that fits you, right? Yeah. So don't start from scratch if you already have a pattern that you like. Um, and then just use the same concepts and to, to create the same sort of shirt. 
I agree. Um, so I would say start with the base that you like and then go from there. So I'm, I was, this is trying to find a knit needle because I noticed there's, it's not in my machine. And of course, it never is. If, if we're, if you're going to go live, you will never have the right machine because that's just the, so this makes people just love the show even more because they realize that we all are like this. <laughs> I know, and I thought I had some open in here, and now, of course, the one that I thought was, I've got some weird color coding going on, so I think I have some different brands of needles. So one brand had like blue that was a stretch needle, but I just, that's the one I just had out, but it looked, I think it's actually like a leather needle. So I think this one is a stretch, <laughs> and we're gonna go with it. All I'm, all I'm trying to do with it is gather the top of the um, ruffle. Okay, so I have this ruffle fabric and I don't want it to be crazy ruffly. We're not trying to make like a prom dress here, but I do want it to be about, I made mine between one and a half and two times the circumference of the shirt. Okay, so um, you can figure that out. Just look at the bottom of your shirt and then you can either double it or you can sort of one and a half it this is in between those two measurements. I'm going to gather it while it's still an open long strip of fabric. And I'm going to just run a single stitch, long stitch. So I'm setting my stitch length to five. And I'm going to run that single stitch down the top of this fabric. And then hopefully we can gather that ruffle from the single stitch. It's my sort of cheater way of gathering to not have to run two gathering stitches. While she's, while she's stitching that, I'm just gonna answer a couple more of your questions. Right. Yes, you can totally make this with a sewing machine. You would use a zigzag stitch then, um, yep. is one idea when you're sewing the pieces together, because then when you stretch the knit, it won't break. So that's one idea for you. And um, I just saw another one, where can you get the pattern? So if you look at the bottom of the screen, you'll see all of our websites and Emily is life so savior on there. She's got a ton of cool patterns on there. So um, somebody just asked about the zipper one from last week. I It should be on AngelaWolf.com. If it's not, it'll be there by tomorrow. And, and then you can also go to blog.brothersews.com for a ton of tutorials. So yeah. I'm answering questions while you're sewing. <laughs> That's great. And of course, I okay, next time I do this, I'm going to learn my lesson. My bobbin thread ran out again. <laughs> That's wait. That only happens on Monday, I think. <laughs> so we'll have a little break in our gathering. We'll be gathering from the ends on both sides. <laughs> and Doris, you can find the pattern if you go to lifesosavory.com. That's Emily's website. And actually, this rash guard today, this post with pictures of my daughter in that pink polka dot. Um, top are is the top post so it's easy to find but you can oh, always use the search you know search swim shirt or um and you should be able to find stuff as well so all right so i have now run my long stitch so set it by the length of five along the top and i'm going to pull the thread <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm I'm reading the questions. You're yes. doing all the work, and I'm just laughing with everyone. So Marianne says someone needs to design a non-ending bobbin. Wouldn't that be the that would be the best? <laughs> it feeds from the back off a huge spool. That would be amazing. <laughs> we never had to spread our bobbins again. We yes. always when brother always says, "What new could we come up with?" That Marianne, that's going to the top of my list. Yes. <laughs> A way to hook up a regular size spool on your bobbin. So there we go. We can see that I'm gathering and it's going to be a really cute ruffle. Now I have to gather from both sides because I stopped and started in the middle because of my little bobbin snafu. So, so uh, Janice, she could be gathering on the serger, but she's also, she's showing how to use different machines. So you could totally gather fabric on a serger. So, yeah. um, but there's many ways to do different things. So we're trying to use different machines. That's, That's right. why. Yeah. And I do really, I do enjoy gathering on the serger. Um, but I don't have, I don't know. I feel like I need to adjust it more when I gather on there. So 
then I, it's not so great for me to do it live. Smart, <laughs> smart process. <laughs> not that this isn't, because knowing me, what's going to happen is this thread is going to break, and then I'm going to have to start all over in gathering this. Um, so as you get where you think you have a good length, then you want to start comparing it to your outfit, right, to see if this is going to fit, and then we'll adjust the gathers from there. So, um, all right, so what I'm going to do to get this all ready to go is I'm going to sew one of the side seams, okay? So let's just move this down here a little bit. So I'm going to sew from under one arm down to the bottom, and then I'll be able to open up my shirt and kind of have one long side. And again, there's not really a sleeve, right? They just kind of have these little nubs um, from the points on the bottom of that sleeve. But we just sort of have a cap sleeve, and it is pretty much just a straight stitch down our shirt. So we don't have too much of a sleeve um, pivot when you go sew the under arm. And what I will do is finish this serger tail here on the underarm, just like I do any others, because I can't just cut that. I either need to fold it over and sew it on my sewing machine or thread it back through or whatever you normally do to finish these loose tails, because we're not hemming this sleeve. All right, but now I have this sort of wide open piece that I can use to figure out the length of my ruffle. Okay, so that's just going to be more helpful and easier for me now to adjust the ruffles. And you can see that we're getting actually pretty close here in our project because once we sew this on and sew the other side seam, we are essentially finished beyond a few... It's so simple. Yeah. I'm uh, reading all the comments. I just, uh, by the way, I just posted in there a link to a YouTube video on how to do gathering on the serger. For those of you that I saw a ton of comments coming in about that. So there's a YouTube video using a brother machine. I just popped it in there for you. So you can always go back and click on that too. And I'll make sure that um, on my blog post with this video, I attach that in there too for you. Awesome. Okay, so I am tying off my gathered ends because I think I have the length pretty well adjusted. But now you can see my gathers are not at all even because I was more focused on how much I was gathering rather than how I was gathering. So at this point, and I would say this is one of my least favorite sewing related tasks, is making sure gathers are even. I somehow always end up with clumps. I don't know just not one of my talents. So if anyone has any great tips beyond using a gathering foot where it's perfect every time. Oh yeah, and um, yes, you could use a gathering fringe foot. There's so many different ways you can do each one. I think I'm reading all the comments and I'm like, we could have like five weeks of uh, doing this project with five yeah. different ways. Yes, um, okay, so uh, I think my gathers are decent. We're gonna, we're gonna go with decent. And from here, yeah, I think they're not too shabby. And then I'm going to you're going to pin or clip this to the bottom edge of your shirt. And again, I haven't tried this, but I think if you just made this out of plain knit, this actually would make a cute little summer shirt. You know, it's kind of a cross between a peplum and a tank it's not really a tank because it has cap sleeves but it's not really a t-shirt because it doesn't really have sleeves but anyway i think there's a you could take some of these ideas and really use different fabrics and make some different adjustments for a lot of fun cute summer shirts so i agree and um i see a couple people the, the serger is also called an overlock machine so yes, yes. Serger overlock. Now, a serger is not the same as a cover stitch, which we've talked about that. Now, there are some combo machines. This one is not. This is just a serger, just an overlock. So it does quite a few different stitches, but mainly three thread overlock and four thread overlock are the main ones that we use, along with other ones. But those are the two main that you usually see on this. Yes. 
Okay, so now I am going to take this and I'm gonna use my serger to attach the ruffle. So I've got it pinned, I've got it open because I only sewed one side seam. So it's gonna be really easy to just zip this ruffle on and then we will um, do some finishing touches to the shirt. Um, and then if after I'm finished, if I can still see some of my gathering um, stitches, you can just go ahead and remove those with a seam ripper. So as I'm going, what I want to do is, one, make sure the edges are lined up so that I'm stitching it on straight. You want to make sure your gathers are remaining even. And I'm also trying to make sure that I am stitching um, over that gathering line. I sewed pretty close to the edge, about a 3 8 seam allowance. So if I'm using that approximate seam allowance to sew this on, I should be covering up most of that stitch, but it doesn't always work that way. Hey, Beverly, you if you have an older serger, you should still be able to do this project. She's just using a, a force thread overlock, so you should be you should be good. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of different ways, and I sewed with knits and kids' clothes for many years simply with a sewing machine. And you know, that's your number one go to. Everything else is just sort of fun and you know, is so makes the makes life easier, but it's not like you have to have it to sew most of these projects, right? And Lynn is looking for a beginner sewing machine help. So Lynn, you might want to go back through all the videos we've been doing for the last couple of weeks because every brand ambassador has been showing off different machines that we all use. So it might be helpful to you to see what they are. Or you can call your brother dealer and maybe test one. That's a good idea too. Okay, so here. Oh my gosh, it's turning out so cute. We have our really cute um, ruffle on there. And um, I'm going to sew up the side seam, and then I'm going to talk about just where we need to finish. Although, speaking of finishing, I just noticed I didn't catch. We got a little. Got to go back and sew that a little bit more. I don't know what I how I missed that. All right. So now with right sides together, I'm going to sew up the second side seam, and then we'll talk um, about finishing some of these. Um, Seams and then we'll be finished. So adorable. So, so I am planning to pin this with um, a swim bottom made with the floral. So I'm using a combination of the pink fabric and the floral fabric to make um, sort of a you know custom tankini. And the top is this sort of design, and then the bottom will just be like a bikini bottom. You're so true. Luckily, don't tend to inspect the seams or critique your work, so you're all good. <laughs> I know. I, my, hey, Bahara. <laughs> my grandma did, she was also crafty, but she, she knit and did needlepoint, and she prided herself on her needlepoints that the backs looked the same as the fronts. <laughs> I just am like, why? Why <laughs> do that <have> time? <laughs> no one sees the bag. No one sees the inside. If it's functional, then <laughs> I mean, I just don't have time to stress about that part of my life. So, <laughs> oh, all right. So I am taking um, any place where I have a serger seam that did not get tucked into another seam or did not get hemmed, which on this outfit, there are really no hems. I'm leaving the bottom of the ruffle unhemmed, and I'm leaving the edges of the sleeves unhemmed. Um, so I'm just taking those serger tails and tucking them back inside the seam using um, this darning needle, and that will be the finish. You could also optionally top stitch around the neckband if you wanted. Um, sometimes I like to do that to have it lay down, sometimes I don't. Again, I think that's just pretty personal preference on whether you like to top stitch your neckband or not. 
So Linda, she's using a knit fabric. And if you missed the beginning of the show, I'll just say one more time, you guys just save it to your page because you can go back and watch it anytime. And she gave you a whole list of what she was using and uh, what kind of fabric, but you could use any knit fabric on this. If you want something though, that's going to protect the sun, you would want to buy or have pull out one of your shirts that already have that, which would make it easy, but you can also buy fabric like that. Yeah. So you just have to look for it. This was fabric that I purchased by the yard and is um, swim, swim fabric. All right. Swim fabric. <laughs> so here is our cute little. Oh my gosh, it looks black. great. And then I'll make um, bottoms out of this blue floral in a little um, brief bikini bottom. I mean, I say bikini, but that sounds weird when you're making it for a kid, but it's going to be a cute little bottom. Um, <laughs> And and it will go with this for you know a little tankini look. So I love this. It is so cute. So somebody said, why wouldn't you hem? Well, the knit does not fray. So no. you could you could go through and do a rolled edge or something, which would yeah. be really cute. But how fast and easy if it's not going to fray, it doesn't yeah. matter. And I just like how light it looks. You know, it doesn't, you're not weighing it down. It's just yeah, it just keeps it, it makes it, I think it, you know, flowy and a little more fluttery on the sleeves rather than having a seam. Totally, you totally could. You totally Yeah, could. I agree though, because if with when that knit is that lightweight, if you went yeah. and did a rolled hem, it would it would make it exaggerated. You would <laughs> see. Like, oh, like a snake. Yeah, yeah. So that's everyone's like, that's oh, no. <laughs> and then this is the other version with the polka dots. And this is for my daughter. This one's for my niece. And then for those of you that missed at the very beginning, I used the same pattern. So it's a unisex kids pattern. And I made sort of a boy version, but this one actually has sleeves instead of the cap sleeve. Um, but otherwise, you know, it's assembled the same, but no ruffle. <laughs> and yep. I did hem this one. So this with my cover stitch, I hemmed both the sleeves. You can see the outside and the inside, the sleeves and the hem. So I did end up hemming this fabric. That really looks good. So some people are asking some questions about thread. And yep. um, you can use various different kinds of thread uh, for this. You could use just regular serger thread. I sometimes like to use woolly nylon or woolly poly in the yep. uh, loopers because, well, actually, I just finished them. Um, I just made this pair of leggings. Check it yeah. out. Yay. It's 10 minutes and my hem turned out so cute. So I actually made like three pairs in the last, that's why I was a little, uh, <laughs> like I look like this because I was having so much fun. That's all we're wearing, so why not make a bunch, right? Awesome. Yeah. But I love the woolly nylon and the woolly poly yeah. in the in the loopers. And so for swimmer, that works out well yeah. as well. Yeah. But um, I don't change my my needle thread to any different. I, I haven't had a swimsuit fall apart while we're swimming, so. <laughs> I'm not overly concerned. I know there are probably official recommendations for thread that's going to hold up to chlorine, but I don't know. Most of us are just recreationally swimming, so the fabric's going to give out too, and there's nothing you can do about that with with chlorine. So, so you know that's the that's the funniest thing, and uh, <laughs> I just have to share this because I'll give you a good laugh because you'll probably agree with me. Do you know how when your bathing suit just keeps getting wider and yeah. wider and yeah. wider? Because the elastic keeps going out, so yes. I, ha I actually have a bathing suit from the uh, '80s. Believe it or not, it was a one piece, and so it had the. I think it says '89, so I kept it just because it had the date. So I, I just think if I can keep wearing it, you know, does it still fit? Well, it stretches out, and every year it gets longer and longer and longer. Yes. <laughs> so of course it's going to still fit. It's about ten sizes bigger than it was, but hey. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and I've noticed too, I mean, when you sew, you get used to like analyzing fabric and you're even in a public pool and you'll see someone who's the back of their suit, you can start to see those like little elastic threads, you know, come out or it starts to be a little see-through and you're just like cringe a little bit on the inside because it's giving out, you know, the fabric just can't hold up forever, so... Right. And I know that you didn't work on this, but I saw a couple questions come rolling through. Yeah. Uh, you you make really cute bathing suits. And I did you show that last week on your show or was that? Oh, I know when you did it on Saturday where our It's So Easy Marathon yeah. you were showing. Yeah. So do you have a preference um, of the type of elastic that you do use for that for those bathing suits? 
So the one on the It's So Easy episode, I was using foldover elastic to bind the edges. And I like that because it's like a single stitch. You just, you know, encase the raw edge with the, the foldover elastic and then sew it around. You do have to trim off your seam allowance. Otherwise, it's wider than you want. Um, but again, I don't purchase swim elastic. I usually just use, I really like, for especially for leg holes and arm holes, holes really narrow elastic, like fourth inch. Usually space is what is recommended, but I just find it kind of chunky, especially around kids' legs. It's not a very big opening. I mean, it's pretty tiny. So I usually just use fourth inch elastic, sew it, fold it, sew it again. And again, I think something else is gonna give out before that elastic does. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Or with kids, they'll grow out of it anyways. But I'm yeah. cracking up. That's the summer, I'm totally happy. Yes. Glenda just said ruche the bathing suit. I'll work on that, Glenda. That, that it would be a lot of ruching. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. So um, if you guys have any questions for us, just holler. We'll stay on for just like a couple more minutes. But then uh, we are, <laughs> Esther says, thank you, thank you, thank you. Bye, Esther. Have a wonderful day. So we have um, quite a few shows this week. You'll be on again on Wednesday for your regular show that's on your page. So if you want to follow. Swim Bottoms. So oh, lead the project. <laughs> So I have our websites down below. You can follow all of us, brothers, blog.brothersos, angelawolf.com, lifesosavory.com. I have our Instagram up above if you can see those. We love it if you follow us on Instagram because that's when we post the behind the scenes photos. And uh, it's wonderful to see you over there. So um, thank you, everyone. I don't, I'm making sure I'm not missing any good questions, but if you, you can always message us too. We try to come back and... Uh, Oh, Jane says, could you show how to use fold over elastic? We definitely could do that in another tutorial coming up. I definitely could see that would be a good one. So, but go to her website because she has a ton of tutorials. And I left a link for the gathering for the YouTube. Uh, it's on YouTube if you want to see that. And so, yeah, that sounds pretty cool. So tomorrow, let's see, one o'clock, Crafting with May. And, and then 4.30, Cindy Hogan will be on doing BES lettering tomorrow. So I hope you guys have a great week. Or day, I should say, till tomorrow. So check off the day. It's yeah. Monday. <laughs> All right. Bye, you guys. Emily, thanks so much. Bye. Wait a minute. Where are the kiddos? It's so quiet. They're outside. It's beautiful here. So um, we had an uninterrupted time today. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Well, tell them all we said hi. <laughs> all right. See you later. Bye. Bye.